Hi everybody. So this is the fourth episode of our series, how to create a web application with Adobe. In the first episode, we have developed a simple sales management application in 25 minutes without any coding. In the second and third episodes, we improved the application using some advanced database features. In particular, calculated fields and custom functions. In this episode, we'll focus on another advanced feature, hooks. What is a hook? Basically, it is a piece of code. It's a custom PHP function that you want to be executed when something happens. For example, you might want to send an email to a particular address every time a user of your database application inserts a record in your products table. Okay? That's something you can do very, very easily using hooks. So we say when something happens, but something what? Basically, for each table or view you have in your application, you can trigger a hook for the following events. After an insert operation, before or after an update operation, before or after a delete operation. So let's make an example a little bit more complicated than the email example I did before. Let's say that each time we register a sale in our application, we want to update the product quantity in our warehouse. And if the quantity is under a certain level, we want to send a low inventory warning message to someone. Let's keep it simple. Uh, in our current uh, application, we have a orders table. Each order can contain several items. For this example, uh, let's do something easier. Let's imagine we have a sales table. Each sale contains just one product. So a record of the sales table contains, among the other fields, the ID product and the quantity bought. Then we have in the table products uh, the details uh, for each product uh, of the quantity we have in our warehouse. Okay? All right. One more thing. We assume we have product enough to satisfy the order. Okay? We, we can add a custom validation function that checks if the quantity is enough before the sale is registered. Remember that we studied custom validation uh, functions in the third part of this tutorial. So we can safely assume that if the order is registered, we have the needed product in our warehouse. So let's focus on the rest. First of all, how can you define a hook in your application? It's very, very easy. We open the custom functions.php file and we add an element to the associative array dollar hooks, defining which function we want to trigger, so to execute. Uh, for example, with the following line, uh, hooks, uh, sales, uh, insert, uh, after, uh, data big send low inventory email, we are saying, for the table sales, for the operation insert, and in particular after insert operation, please execute a function called database send low inventory email. I know, very long name, but I like long names, I'm sorry. It's easier to understand your code after months or years if you use long names for functions, classes, and variables. So we just need to write the function now. Uh, here is the function I wrote, and let's analyze it. So I'm pretty sure that if you already have some knowledge of PHP, the things I'm going to explain now sound quite easy. If you don't, probably they sound hard. Of course, this is not a PHP course. Uh, PHP is an easy but very powerful language, so if you want to learn it, there are some good tutorials and books. What I'm trying to teach here instead is how to use your PHP knowledge to improve and customize in great detail your database application. 
As you know, with Databeak you can create a web application even without any coding. Watch the first part of this series for more details. But of course, if you know some coding, you can do even more. Okay? So, first of all, <coughs> the input parameter $ID sale. Um, for an after insert hook, you have only one parameter in input, which is the value of the primary key auto increment field, if any, that you have just generated with the last insert operation. So basically here, since we had as primary key of my sales table an auto increment field, after a sale is registered, this function is executed and receives in input the ID sale of the sale we have just registered. Okay? So at the beginning, if the sales table is empty, the first sale will, will get for the field uh, ID sale uh, the value 1, the second sale the value 2, and so on and so forth. Okay? Another thing I want to discuss here is the first line, global dollar con. What does it mean? Basically, the variable con refers to the database connection used by the current database application. If you need to execute queries on your database in your hook function, you need to add this global dollar con statement that allows you to use the, that connection without opening a new one. Okay? There are a few variables in Databeak which are in the global scope and $con is one of them. So let's see the core of the code now. Remember there are many ways to implement what we need, this is just one of them. Let's first divide the code into three parts. So the first part, uh, update the quantity in the table products. The second part selects the current quantity after the update. And finally, the third part, send an email if needed. Um, as you can see, I normally don't use the PHP PDO library directly. I use a Databeak abstraction layer, which is implemented on the top of PDO. You can find all the functions of the layer in include dbfunction.php. It's very easy to use. You can just refer to these examples to learn it. Um, another thing to notice is that, is that we use prepared statements. Uh, I don't want to go into much details about uh, prepared statements. If you don't know what a prepared statement is, just Google PHP prepared statements and you will find a lot of information. Anyway, this is the most secure way to execute queries. So if you are not used to them, my advice is to try to get used to as soon as possible. Um, anyway, in the first part, we execute an update query. So first, we define the query. It's an update of products in our joint sales. So we join together the table's products and sales, considering just one sale, the one just registered. And that's why we wrote sales.idsale equal column ID sale. We'll explain later. And we subtract to the quantity we have in products, the quantity we have in the sale just registered. Okay, so that column ID underscore sale is a placeholder. It's a parameter of our prepared statement. With this part of the code, we fill that parameter with $ID sale, which is the sale uh, the sale ID we received in input. Again, uh, maybe you are not used to prepare a statement and normally you just do something like this. All right? My advice is to get used to prepare a statement because if your parameter comes from a user input, this is not the case in this specific case, your query can be exposed to security vulnerability. I don't have time to go through these risks in this tutorial. Just trust me or Google SQL injection to get more information. 
In this case, we only have one placeholder. If you have more, you just need to add a line here and everything will work. For example, values to bind ID customer equals to dollar ID customer. This is just an example. It doesn't make uh, uh, any sense here, but just to show you how to add other parameters in case you need them. Um, the last line actually executes uh, the prepare statement. So another way to implement this part is by using two queries. Probably this second method would be easier to understand if, you, if your SQL skills are basic. Basically, first you get the ID product from the sales table and then you update the table products. Uh, in particular, the record corresponding to the ID product uh, you selected with the previous query. So, two queries instead of one. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, second part. Again, we join sales and products but this time using a SELECT statement, because we just need to retrieve the quantity of the product. And we also retrieve the description of the product, which we might use in the email. So the following part is very similar until execute prepared uh, DB. In the first part, uh, we just needed uh, to execute the query. It was an update statement. Now, after the execution, we need to fetch the results. What does it mean? Uh, typically, with a selling statement, uh, you create a record set. You retrieve one or more records. In this case, just one, because we are considering one product. So, with this line, uh, dollar $row equals to fetch row db uh, dollar uh, res prepare, we fill the associative array dollar $row with the values selected. Basically, uh, row desk product will contain the description of the product and row quantity product, the quantity available. Okay. If the quantity is less than 10, I send, using the PHP mail function, a message having subject, low inventory and body the quantity for the product, uh, whatever, and here you will have the description of the product, is whatever, and then the quantity. Okay? Okay, that's it, basically. Um, you don't have to do anything in the form configurator. Uh, so now, when a sale is registered, the uh, quantity of the related product uh, in the products table, so in our warehouse, uh, is updated. And uh, if the quantity is low, a warning email uh, is uh, sent. Okay? If you have any question related to this tutorial, you can ask by uh, posting a comment. And yeah, that's it. See you next time. Ciao!